and welcome, at least to Peter. <laughs> He's here. Uh, welcome to uh, winter solstice, the longest day of the year. Greetings from Sammamish, Washington, where it's 30 some degrees and foggy and cold and yeah, winter. It's winter here. Anyway, uh, today in this live stream, we're going to do uh, one task, and that one task is to create something like this, and we're going to create it in Adobe Lightroom Classic. Uh, Lightroom Classic is the uh, version of Lightroom that has the ability to build photo books, so I'm going to walk through that process and uh, share the steps, share some uh, philosophies and strategies and some tips and tricks I've learned along the way. So uh, feel free to add comments. Uh, I'm trying to pay attention to that. It's a lot like mission control here with uh, lots of screens going on and I'm trying to figure it all out. Uh, if you need uh, a break and uh, need to see the lava lamp again, just let me know and we can look at the lava lamp. So anyway, here's me. Um, so uh, da -da 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 -da. this will probably go about an hour, hour and a half, depending on how long uh, it takes to do this uh, and uh, how my bladder is doing. Uh, I had my booster shot yesterday, so I am fully currently vaccinated. We'll see how things go in the new year. And uh, so I've been drinking lots and lots of water to mitigate any side effects so far. Only some pain right here where I got the shot. But other than that, all is good. All right. So what are we doing? We are going to head over to Lightroom Classic and we're going to build a book. But before we do that, there's some things you need to do before you can start getting ready for this. So first thing to do is hopefully as you've been importing photos along the way throughout the year, you've been following some best practices. And I'll leave links to, uh, I'll, they're not in there now. I've, I thought I added them, but it looks like they disappeared. Um, <laughs> cover photo of the book. Yes, uh, Peter is saying that uh, the lava lamp should be the cover photo of the book, but maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about philosophy of choosing a color photo. That's a good question. Um, I'm trying to find all my buttons on my uh, stream deck. Anyway, <laughs> I haven't done a live stream in a while, so I'm kind of rusty. Um, okay, housekeeping stuff. First, uh, as you've been importing photos, hopefully you've been uh, organizing them as you've been going along. My structure is I create a collection set for each year that I call out and about, and then the year name. Um, that, uh, then I put subfolders in that for uh, either locations or um, projects and things like that. Um, and then I give each photo as they're imported, I give them a name and my naming convention is usually something about the location and then the date the photo was taken. So this makes it really easy to sort my photos and just look at the ones I want to. Speaking of sorting photos, another thing I do along the way as I'm uh, looking at each photo is I go through them and uh, cull them, I sort them. Uh, and I use the, a five-star rating system for that. It just, as I'm going through the photos, I hit number five on photos I like or are maybe go through a second time and get rid of the ones that aren't quite as good as I thought they were. And um, then we keep going on. So um, I've done all that work. I'll leave links. Uh, I'll add the links when this uh, playback is uh, replayed so that you can watch how to do that in Lightroom Classic if you don't know already. Uh, what else do we need to do? Uh, we need to edit the photos before we begin. So you need to make whatever changes you're going to make to the photos as far as exposure, cropping, color, all that stuff. That all needs to happen ideally before um, you begin building the book. And I'll show you why in a minute. Second, oh, well, actually, this is the number four thing, is you're going to want to exclude some photos from the book Maybe like for me, I'm in my in this book. This is a personal book, so I'm not going to include any of my um, portrait photos uh, of clients. I'm not going to include any wedding photos. So kind of make a list of things you might want to exclude as well. All right, we're heading over to Lightroom. Here we go. So that's kind of the preemptive stuff. Uh, we'll jump over to Lightroom with a picture in picture and we'll see how uh, what is that? Oh, I know what that is. Don't, don't pay attention to that. We'll look at a different photo so that goes away. All right, anyway, technical problems already five minutes in. It's a good thing. All right, 
So what I'm going to do here is sort my photos to find the ones that I want to include in the book. As I mentioned, what I've done, if you'll look over here in my collections, which is Lightroom's version of photo albums, I have a collection set, which is a collection of collections. Uh, and inside of that, so I have out and about 2021, and there are 2,949 photos in there, which are the ones I want to get to the book. So what I'm going to do to make this even easier is I'm going to use the power of smart, uh, smart albums, albums with brains. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a collection set for the photo book. Okay, so here we go. In the collections panel on the left hand side, I'm going to click this plus button and I'm going to create a collection set. Collection sets are, because I'm going to put a couple things in here and I'll, it's a, this is kind of a workaround that I've discovered. There might be another way to do this, but uh, this is the way I know works for me. So I'm going to turn off, I don't want this collection set inside a collection. I just want it free and easy. I'm going to put a pound sign in front of the name to make, so it shows up in front of everything else at the top of my list. So I'm going to highlight the name, pound sign, photo book 2021. Sometimes I spell photo book as two words. Sometimes I spell it as one. And sometimes I have an extra capital. It's just amazing what I do. All right, I'm going to create that book. I mean, that collection. So this is photo book 2021. It's at the top here on the left. So now I need to populate it. So what I'm going to do first is create a collection, a smart collection inside that's going to go inside of that collection set. So create smart collection. And this is going to go inside of that collection we just made, which is at the top. Apologies for some slowness here. Um, Lightroom is uh, takes a lot of computing power um, as well as Ecamm Live, which I'm using to stream this. Uh, my MacBook Pro is on order, but will not arrive until the first week of February. All right. So what do I want to rate by? I mean, how do I want to sort these, create a smart collection? So what I'm going to do is uh, the first thing I want to do is a rating because I went through and did the five star thing. Um, so I want to sort by rating and that rating is greater than or equal to number five. So I'm just going to click create so you can see what happens when I do that. So this will, what this is going to do is add all the photos from, well, Actually, I, I need to do something first. I need to do another um, thing, which is to pick just the date of the photos from 2021. So what I need to do is come down here and go to date. Capture date is, uh, is uh, after 2021, uh, excuse me, 2020, uh, 12, 31. Okay, so what this is going to do is put all the photos from after December 31, 2020 that have five star ratings on them. So we're going to click create and we're going to see how many photos we end up with. This is going to take a minute. It's doing some thinking. Um, so what this does now, you can see my smart collection has 2,148 photos in it, which is less than the 2,900, I think, photos we had. Now we need to do some more here. We need to do some more narrowing of this list because there's lots and lots of stuff here I still don't need. So I'm going to double click on Smart Collection. Again, you click on the icon to bring up the window of your choices. Um, and when I'm, you can change the name of the Smart Collection. I'm just going to leave it alone for now. So we're going to add a couple other things so I can exclude some stuff, those professional projects I mentioned. So uh, what I'm going to do is go down to any searchable text um, doesn't contain, and uh, one of my clients I do headshots for is called DKS. They're an engineering firm in Seattle. So I, I, I don't want anything that includes DKS. I want any searchable text doesn't contain wedding. And I did a project for a, a friend of ours who's a realtor, uh, and her name's Kaylin. So we're going to get, I'm going to exclude hers too. Doesn't contain. 
and we're going to click save and that should get our list down to about how many dun 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 886 so <sighs> narrowed it down quite a bit which is good and you can always add more exclusions if you want uh if there's other locations or other things or you can oh i know i know another thing i'm going to get rid of in here one more thing hang on we're gonna get ready on the book here in just a second there we go. Uh, one more thing. Uh, I have some uh, photos of uh, my camera gear that I've used for YouTube videos or other places. So any searchable text doesn't contain, and we're gonna include the word, I'm just gonna add the word gear, uh, and that should reduce it further. 739, so there we go. All right, so now we have our set of photos that we're gonna use as our baseline. And our next step is to activate the book building. Actually, no, it's not. I apologize. <laughs> this is a tricky thing. I can't build a book from a smart collection. I discovered that earlier this year. What you have to do is copy the contents of this collection and put it into a regular collection. Here's how you do that. I'm just going to select all these photos, Command A. I am going to go up to the collections again and uh, click on the plus sign. I'm going to create a collection, a regular old collection, a dumb collection. And this is going to be uh, called, uh, I'm just going to do my initials, photo book 2021. And I want to include selected photos. I have 739 photos selected, so those will be added. Here we go. Click create. Thinking, thinking, thinking. There we go. So I have the same number of photos, 739, because it added all of the photos that were from the Smart Collection. Now, if I go back and change the Smart Collection and add or subtract, obviously those photos won't, um, these aren't linked. So you would need to manually update your dumb collection, if you will. All right? Are you all right? Are you doing okay? Do you need a drink of water? I'm going to take a drink of water. Here we go. Hope your holiday festivities and plans are going well as we end this year soon. Uh, Luminar 4, oh, Enrique has hopped in real quick and said, um, use Luminar 4 and Affinity Photo, but I'm watching to see what I can apply to my workflow. Thank you, Enrique, with your alligator photo. Are you an alligator? <laughs> anyway, welcome, Enrique. Hi, I know you've been on the channel before. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so back to Lightroom. I have to go over here and get back into Lightroom so it stays this way. All right. Next step is to click on the book module. The book module is where you build the book. So what it's going to do is potentially freak you out here. <laughs> it is building this massive book with one photo per page and it's going to tell you page limit is reached because the book can only be the maximum size of a book is 240 pages and at one photo a page with six, 700 photos obviously there's a problem just click ok and your next step is to go in the auto so here's the book settings on the right hand side book settings on the right hand side there's a bunch of stuff here we'll walk through it in just a moment but our first step first step right now is to clear the layout so just get rid of everything except basically the front cover and the back of the book okay so before we do anything else the most important thing you need to decide is the size of the book the physical dimensions of the book because um, that will potentially change layout and how many photos per page you're going to do all sorts of things so size is the starting point so that starts up here in book settings on the top right so standard landscape what, what size is that that's 10 inches by 8 inches wide. That's this, this size right here, 25 by 20 centimeters. Um, a large landscape that is this size. This is from London in 2018. So this is 13 inches wide by 11 inches tall. It's quite a bit larger, quite a bit larger. There we go. Uh, here, let's go to the main cam. Uh, quite a bit larger. And then the other size is, you can have a large square, which would be 12 inches by 12 inches. I don't have one of those. I do have a small square, which is 
seven inches by seven inches. So you got three sizes basically that I have here. Uh, you can tell I've built lots of books. These books are um, done through a company called Blurb, B-L-U-R-B dot com. Uh, I'll give you some strategies on Blurb in a minute, but this is in, this functionality is integrated uh, into Lightroom, and it will send when you're all done. It will send the book automatically over to Blurb, and then you open your account if you don't already have one, choose how many you want, when you want it to arrive, and all that good stuff. So what we're going to do is for this purpose is, is a standard landscape. It's a nice medium size. Uh, the photos are big enough, basically an eight by ten, that when you're looking at them. They feel nice, um, stuff, you know, they look like this when you go to the Museum of Flight. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Next decision you need to make is what kind of cover do you want? Um, there's several basic types. There's the image wrap hard cover, so this one. This is a hard piece of cardboard and the image is printed on a, a piece of paper uh, that is then glued to the cover and then covered with this gray slip sheet. Um, so this is kind of neat for kind of a coffee table kind of presentation. It feels really good. They also have a hard cover with uh, what's called a dust jacket, which would be basically a printed cover, but it just wraps around, kind of like the hardcover books in the bookstore. And lastly is a soft cover, which is like this on, my, on the small book. So the image is printed on the cover and it's, it's a thicker piece of paper, but it's not as thick as that cardboard. Um, so this is nice for maybe a little more casual. It does save a significant amount of money, about, depending on the book, 10 to 20%. So there you go. Also, you will see, uh, well, actually, let's keep going down our options here as we're building our book. The paper type, you have several paper types, uh, premium luster, matte, uncoated, pearl, standard, and standard lay flat. Uh, a lay flat book has a different spine, it's more complicated to lay out, and it's the most expensive book. Um, my paper choice is the luster, it's kind of in between, uh, um, it, it's, their, it's a really good image quality, uh, it's got nice finish to it. It's coated so it, it holds dynamic range well with contrasty photos like I tend to photograph. And uh, it's just good uh, overall, works well for me, and it's not their most expensive paper. If you had softer images, you might go for the uncoated, or if you were doing lots of black and white or muted tones, the uncoated paper might be an option. And you can see as, it, let's say I pricked the pre picked the premium matte, uh, it'll update the pricing information down here. It's the same price for premium matte as it is for premium luster. Let's see what their ProLine Uncoated is. That adds about 20%. So it went from $40.99 to $47.99. So about eight bucks. Uh, so that's their most expensive paper. Um, I don't think I've used it. I stick with the luster. It works for me. I'm a simple man. All right. Um, so we have an estimated price, $40.99 for a cover and no pages. Hmm, that doesn't seem quite right. Well, the minimum book size, I think, is 24 pages, so that, that includes the first 24 pages. Um, what I'm going to do is just add a bunch of pages now. And I'm going to add a bunch of pages. Uh, my my end-of-the-year books, I do one photo per page. It's just a simple layout to help it go fast. So what I'm going to do here, this is page number one. Um, I'm going to set it to uh, one photo per page. And the, the template I want to use for that is this. Uh, I do like a white mat around the edge. Um, it's my style nowadays. I used to have go all the way to the edge, but uh, bleed to the edge. But I like the mat now. Your mileage will vary. So the reason I did this first is now I'm, what I'm going to do is just add a bunch of pages. I'm going to click this Add Page button to build, start giving the skeleton for the book content to go in. So I'm just going to click this a whole bunch of times. And you can see that $40.99 price has not changed yet. I'm on page 10, 11, 12. It's going to go up, I think, at right around 20. When I hit 20 or 20, yeah, there it goes. So now it's adding, I think it's about $0.85 cents a page in this type of book. Um, I'm going to go to about 50 pages just to get us started. And uh, there we go. So right now in this specification, this book would cost $53.89 US to print. That does not include shipping. 
Here's uh, Michael's tip number one for working with Blurb. Uh, if you don't already have an account with them, when you create your account, you get 30% discount coupon. Um, I always wait for sales. Uh, they usually run one sale at least a month. Uh, it's usually prominent on their website. You just go to blurb.com. It'll be at the top and give you the coupon code. Uh, I haven't paid full price for a Blurb book maybe ever. <laughs> so I've never paid the $53.89. Usually... Around the holidays and New Year's, they've got somewhere between 25 and 50% off. Sometimes they'll include free shipping. Speaking of shipping, depending on where you live, uh, locally where I live, there is a, a Blurb Press uh, close by in the Seattle area. So I just do standard shipping and I still get it in two days once it's shipped. So you don't necessarily need overnight. All right, let's get started with our book. Um, my, f Let's go back to... Lightroom, so we can uh, see what we're doing. So, oh, I apologize. You weren't seeing all those pricing and all those things because I, I was just chit-chatting. Uh, see, user error. I need a director, a producer, a co-pilot. Anyway, we're back to Lightroom. Uh, this book would be $53.89, as I mentioned. So, what I do, uh, the first thing I do is uh, create a cover for the book and a back cover. and we're So, we'll get started there. Uh, choosing a cover image is, you know, it's, as Peter said, you know, maybe we need the lava lamp. Um, that's not my favorite image of the year, so I'm not going to use that. What I try and do is find an image that kind of embodies the whole year. That really, you know, if I had a, how the year felt. Uh, how it felt photographically, how it felt personally, how it felt professionally. So I'm going to look for that image. One of the first things I'm going to do is go edit, select none, because if I, the the way this interface works is it's just drag and drop, and if I try and if I had all uh, of the 700 photos selected and I dragged, it would drag all of them. Yeah, I discovered that by accident too. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, I already have a photo in mind. It's towards the end of the year. Where is it? Is it? No, it's back this way. It's a downside when you have lots and lots of photos. It's in this set. It's this photo here. This red maple leaf. Uh, I'm going to use that for my cover image. Oops, see now everything's still selected. It, uh, see how it has that stack when I dragged it up? Don't do that because it's got 800, 739 photos selected. So I need to go to edit, select none. Come on, select none. I'll just do this. Why aren't you selecting none? Lightroom. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the grid mode. I'm just hitting the G key on my keyboard, and I'm going to try it from here. There we go. So now all the photos are deselected. We're going back to our book. Hopefully it's still there. No, it won't. Yeah, it will be. Good. Um, so... Thank you for your patience. <laughs> um, let's go back over here. Here's that photo. We're going to go up to the top. I can change uh, the view size, the thumbnail view, uh, to fill this up with more or less photos, uh, pages of the book, excuse me. I usually keep it at uh, this view so I can see two, two uh, pages and uh, spread before and after. But when I'm working on the cover, though, I do go to the single page view. Um, so I have to go back to the cover. I'm using the bottom page here to navigate to the cover. And I click, hold, drag on that red maple leaf. Super easy interface. Um, I can, from here on a photo, I can, when, with it highlighted, I can zoom in. I don't have tons of pixel precision in layout with um, this uh photo layout tool, but uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I, you give up some uh, some power for uh, ease of use and integration into, uh, into Lightroom. So I'm going to go back out to the, um, the standard zoom here, fill up the page. Oops, come on. Something like that. we go so that's so going to fill up the cover the color will the cover will be a full bleed photo like this so it will go edge to edge on the cover you also have a back cover can you tell it was kind of moody in 2020 <laughs> moody 
photos. What a year that was. Uh, so there's that. That's my cover. Um, what do I want for the back cover? There's another photo in here that I want to use in this little sequence. Uh, leaf on my car windshield. Uh, that's kind of shaped like a heart. Our, you know, Valentine's Day heart. So I like that. I'm going to drop that in there. Uh, that composition will work. Uh, one of the things that's a little tricky with these book layouts is they are different um, uh, ratios, uh, dimensions than most photos. These, you know, this is an eight by ten, so that's going to be a different size than a different uh, aspect ratio than the four to three to four that comes out of a camera, most cameras. All right. Next, let's put some titles on here. Um, we're going to put a title on the front. We'll put my web address on the back. And then we're going to put a title on the spine of the book as well so that it will look like this. Here we go. So how do you put a photo title on here? Uh, I'm going to add photo text. I'm going to click where it says add photo text. And I'm just going to start typing. And I keep my, the, for the, I borrowed this from a guy named Sean Tucker. He just puts his uh, year on his cover. So I'm just going to put 2021. And you can't see anything because it defaults to black text. And that's the black cover. So I don't want that. So I have to go down to my text tools. And where am I going to go? I'm going down to the type panel. I'm going to choose the color first so I can at least see what I'm doing. Then I can change the font to any of my fonts I have. Uh, I have a font I use in my brand. It's called Axiforma. Uh, so I just typed a few letters and it selected that. I'm going to go for the bold version of that. And then I'm going to increase my font size. Just drag it out. How big? Till it looks good. <laughs> I'm a very sophisticated designer. Um, it's, it's a little far on the left for me. Again, I can't, I don't, ha I can't really move this around left to right. I can move it up and down this text block, but what I can do to move left and right is this padding, the, where is it? Uh, padding, the cell padding up here. So I'm going to increase the padding. Think of it as an internal margin and that'll nudge uh, it away from the edges of that. So in this case with it left aligned, it will move it away from the left edge. So that's just eyeball looking good. That's how I lay things out is by eyeball look. <laughs> uh, let's do the back cover real quick. Add photo text again. It's going to inherit the properties from the cover, which is kind of cool, but it's a little big. Uh, so this one, I just put my web address on here. Uh, dot com. That's too big. I don't need to. I don't need to yell this. Most people who see this book will know it's from me, but just in case it it uh, lands itself somewhere without me around, um, I, I include this. Uh, so I'm just going to go to book for a lighter weight. I'm going to decrease the size quite a bit, uh, probably down to about 18 or so, because I, again, I don't really need to yell this. Um, I'm going to right align this because what I'm going to do is is put it right up here in kind of this empty space. Uh, again, I'm going to use the padding to push that off that right edge, something like that. And next, I'm just going to move this up. Click, hold, drag. Where does it look good? We'll see how that looks. That'll work. That'll work. Last but not least, we need to put some text on the spine. So that's really cool. Um, it's nice to, you can color the spine. Uh, here's my 2019 book. I did a red spine, a little more cheerful year, still dramatic flop, uh, leaves. Huh, I have leaves on most of my books. Anyway, <laughs> patterns. Um, so first step here is to create a background color for the spine. And where you do that is in the background part of the right hand side. So you turn on the background color and you choose a color. So the way you choose a color is to click on this currently white square, click on that once. It'll bring up the color picker box, which is currently just set to gray scale. So it's just shades of gray. You notice there's an eyedropper in here. Here's what you do with that eyedropper. I want to select a color from that back cover. So click and hold the eyedropper in the selection area and then bring it into your photo. I'm still holding. So I kind of want a dark blue gray. 
So I'm looking for a dark blue gray. It takes a minute to kind of resample because there's a lot of math going on here. Something like that, that'll work. I can always change my mind. I can always change my mind. So that's my back cover. I'm just gonna click in here. Uh, again, type 2021. Again, it is, um, it's a totally different font this time and it's still black. So I'm gonna select all Command A or Control A on a PC. The font I want is still Axiforma. And then I want uh, bold again. We'll go bold for that just to make it stick out. And we want the color to be white. White. And I want center aligned vertically. And I also want center aligned in the height. So for the center aligned in the height, that's this um, option uh, in the uh, type panel. Uh, my size, I'll probably go to about 16. I've just highlighted the, uh, the font size and then I'm just typing in a new number. I could probably go even a little bigger than that. Let's go to 18. This is gonna be on a bookshelf, so you want it to stand out a little bit. So there we go, we got our cover with a uh, title, uh, my web address, and info on the spine. Lightroom, this is the only place in Lightroom you ever need to save anything. And it, if, you, if I go right now and like, oh, I wanna edit that photo again, and I leave the book, if I come back, all this work is gone. So fortunately, they have this option up here to create saved book. So do that, I usually do this first thing after I build the cover. Create saved book. It's going to ask me to give it a name and where the location of the book is. I have my, um, I want photo book up there, 2021. And this is going to be MWS, my initials, photo. I cannot type when people are watching. Book 2021. That name is already taken. I'm going to do version two. There we go. I already made this book. I already have it printed. Don't tell anybody. Uh, oh, uh, Peter's asking a question. Is there an option uh, under image to do, uh, to do an image so you can have 12 piece series that creates a full image if you place them next to each other? Huh, I will check that out. Give me a second. So could you, yes, there is, you could drag a photo right here. So let me just, uh, let me find a decent photo. Well. That could work. Uh, I'll just grab this one. It's nice and sharp. Um, do I have to? Let me see. I think I have to turn the background color off. Huh. That doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let's see what it's got. No. Okay. So I don't know. I'm guessing not. I'm gonna say no for now. I'll have to do some more research. Um, so we're already 35 minutes in. <laughs> We've only got the cover done. So um, let me keep going on the build of the book. I'm gonna switch back to uh, the grid view so I can see multiple pages at a time. And then basically from here on out, what I do with the book is just kind of go chronologically and find photos um, that tell the story of the year for me. Occasionally I will, um, so I start chronologically, that's what I do. And then I'll maybe go mood wise and add some other photos that were maybe out of sequence date wise, but maybe fit the mood otherwise. So start with a photo um, starting in January. I'm just gonna grab this, this leaf. Let's zoom in just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, this kind of looks like a poppy seed leaf. Um, rainy day, surprise in Seattle area there we go so i'm going to start the book with that photo we're going to go to the next spread uh, and i'm just going to drag and drop some more photos in um, what i like to do like for example on the this photo here on the left it has some it looks like it's looking into the center of the page so i try and um, honor that respect that as much as possible um, it's just a good way to kind of get pages turning to bring you into the middle uh, this one looks a little to the right, but that'll help you turn the page, maybe? I don't know. So um, we're just going to keep going. We're going to go to the next sequence of pages. 
and uh, I'm just going to drag and drop some photos in. Uh, I have actually already built this book once, so I, I kind of know what I'm going to do, and this will help you be a little quicker in watching this lengthy video, uh, this live stream. So got some, uh, again, this one kind of pointing to the right, the center aligned here, uh, nice and simple. We'll add a couple more of that winter feeling stuff. So here's one that faces to the right. I'm actually going to zoom in a little more on this one. So I clicked on the photo and then I just changed the zoom. And then I'm going to click, hold, drag on the photo and kind of just realign it to fit that a little bit better. What do I want on the left-hand side? How about this guy? It's a little different color, but it still works. And we'll zoom in a little bit more there as well. There we go. Cool. So moving along, we're just going to, I'm going to zoom back out and just kind of cruise through this a little bit more quickly. So again, what I'm doing is just going sequentially. So I've started at the beginning of the year. Uh, so there's some gear that made it through. Uh, my son's dog, that's Keanu. He's kind of awesome. Uh, not kind of, he's very awesome. This is when I got my um, 70 to 300 lens. I started with these photos here. Uh, so let's honor that and throw that photo in, this spiky and this guy, this cool texture. Uh, this bird, we'll throw that one in over there. Again, kind of thinking uh, thematically, maybe that, I don't know if that bird works there. We may have come back and delete him. Uh, took the, the lens out and uh, trust your gut when you're doing these layouts, especially if you're doing, I like doing one photo per page. You could do multiple photos that you can do. Uh, the way you add change the layout template is just select like two photos do you want three photos four photos uh and then what layout do you want them in do you want them with a border do you want them square do you want them you know it's kind of still a similar aspect ratio lots of lots of layout options for this kind of year-end book i've i've been going because it's a lot easier <laughs> with one photo per page except when I do a pano that spreads a couple pages, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, let's see, let's find a bird. Let's find another bird. I've got some other birds here, but they're all facing the wrong way. <laughs> if I, here's what you could do. Here's a cheat, kind of a cheat. Uh, I'm gonna switch back to develop. I don't have to save the book anymore. It's already saved. It's tracking all the stuff we're doing. I'm gonna go back into develop and make a quick change to this one photo. And you have to do it in the develop module. You can't make edits to the photos in the book module. So what I'm going to do here is go to photo and I'm going to flip it. I'm going to flip horizontal. So it, the duck's facing the other way. Flipping. Can't wait till that MacBook Pro gets here. The new one. This one's only two years old, but you start running live streaming and live, uh, for the book purpose. So now I've got two birds facing each other. I like it. I uh, got some kind of artsy fartsy photos here. <laughs> we'll skip those for a minute. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Oh, yeah, here's kind of a neat sequence. This is from uh, the Bellevue Botanical Garden, and it's, it's just light and shadows, uh, which I tend to like. Um, a couple different looks at that. Uh, I also have, I think, where'd it go? Do I have it? In? Yeah, I've got, uh, this is a neat little, again, this is just kind of abstract. A uh, little sequence, put them together, split them up. Again, they, they go together as a group. They also um, kind of give you a break from nature. Now I'm doing something a little different, but still connected to nature. As you're sequencing, just like, you know, putting a, a, a collection of music together, you kind of want different pacings, different moods, different, um, different uh, concepts and emotions maybe. So that's what I hope to accomplish there. Oh, this is one of my favorite photos. Uh, this guy here, this leaf. And I love the glow, the backlight glow. This was from winter. When was that? Oh, it was actually spring, uh, April 13th. Um, so a couple photos right there. We'll go back into the flowers for a minute. We'll do these guys. They're kind of similar. 
So you kind of get the idea. Just uh, I, and there's a million ways to lay out a photo book, um, and there's there's really no wrong way. It's just if it feels good when you're all done. So we're gonna keep going for just a minute, um, and I think because you don't need to watch me do the whole book. You kind of get the idea. So what I'm gonna do in just a few minutes is hop over to the finished book, and um, and do what and uh, show you what it all looks like. So this photo, this photo is, uh, it's, well, it's not a pano, but I'm going to make it a pano. So I'm going to have it spread across two pages. And the way you do that is you start with the left side page, click on the page selector icon and you go to um, two page spreads and choose the type of uh, layout you want and then drag and drop the photo. And then that you get this nice wide look at that. I did also did that on another photo from Utah. Where was that one? I think it's this one. So we'll do another panel real quick just to show you how it works. So again, two page spread, that template, drag and drop. And then adjust vertically it's filled up the horizontal space. Now we have some room vertically to adjust. So there you go. So you can have panos that span multiple pages um, and that's kind of fun. Uh, we'll do a couple more from Utah because we're here. 400 millimeter lens. This little guy will zoom in a little more on him because you still weren't close enough. Well, actually that's the close one. That's the one I want, this photo. So the cool thing is you can just drag and drop and it replaces a photo and takes it out. As you're looking at this interface as well, it has the number one on this photo to let me know it's been used. It's in a page. Um, so that's kind of a cool for this interface, especially when you have like 800 photos. Did I already use that one? So now you know. Here's my wife, Debbie. It's kind of thematically colored the same. It was the same day. So we'll add that photo there. da 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 uh, had some cool sunsets in Utah, some really cool um, vistas, lots of flowers, lots of birds uh, with the telephoto lenses. I really like telephoto. Uh, there's a wedding photo I snuck in, lots of flowers, moons, uh, more flowers, and bumblebees. It was a varied year. It was a varied year. Lots of different stuff. Uh, and then this last batch of photos um, was... Uh, the most recent group of photos I've taken, and it was the first kind of concentrated effort I've taken to make photos uh, after I had the eye diagnosis. So I've lost a little bit of vision in my left eye, and I take photos with my left eye up to the camera, so I have to adjust. So learning new things. So let's go look at uh, the finished book, because I know you want to see that. Is it going to switch? Why did it? Oh, let's just do this. Let's do create save book before I do anything else. Come on. Yeah, again, it's just okay. I'm not sure what happened there. Okay. Technical difficulties again in Lightroom. Did Lightroom crash? It looks like it might have crashed. Lightroom hardly ever crashes, except when you're building a book and doing it live. Hold, please. Let's come back here while we're doing that. All right, so let me uh, relaunch Lightroom, see if I can show you the finished book in Lightroom. While I'm waiting for that, here it is. Uh, there's the cover, here's the spine, there's the back. Oh, I guess I put, <laughs> I guess I just changed my mind on where I wanted to put the, my web address. It was even more subtle putting it in the, in the corner. So here's the finished book. Uh, I think it's about a hundred pages. Uh, I've got some street photography in here. More street photography. So lots of different, again, you can see there, it was a varied year. Uh, it was a really fun year. Uh, it was a stressful year. 
it was um, a learning year, a growth year, all that good stuff. So um, I, I find doing books like this is a great way to reflect, a great way to think back, a great, uh, especially for me, I've, I've discovered that I tend to be, I'm in the moment, but I'm also like 50% in the next moment oftentimes. So going and looking back is a powerful, oh yeah, remember what else was going on when you were creating those photos and the memories associated with them. So I am very, very grateful for that. Uh, Lightroom has relaunched. Uh, we're just going to leave it. Um, so I built a photo book, got you started. If you have any questions uh, on building your own photo book, uh, it, let me know. Uh, I do have a whole other video that just is a little more streamlined version of this, but I thought I would try it live. We had varied success. We had a few folks here. I'm grateful for that. Um, so yeah, we're coming up on about an hour in, about 50 minutes in. Um, not quite my lunchtime, so I'm okay for a few more minutes. Any questions? Any other questions or other stuff you want to talk about? Those of you who still might be here, uh, I should probably see who's here. I don't know who's here. For watching, it looks like. Um, any other questions? Photography questions? Thoughts? Comments about the year? Your experiences? Okay, another drink of water time. So. Um, Next week, I'm going to have another pre-recorded video, and it's going to be the third in this three-part series about reflections on 2021. Um, lots of stuff happened. I'm sure lots of stuff has happened for you. Lots of stuff has happened for me. Uh, so I'm going to kind of share some of those, both, again, personally, professionally, photographically, some of the things that have uh, gone on for me this year, and um, reflect on them and do some thinking. And uh, don't forget to share the final book. Yeah, um, Peter is saying that. Don't forget to share the final book. Here's, let me go over, see if uh, my friendly neighborhood Lightroom is going to behave. Hang on just a second while I'm doing that. Yeah, so building these photo books is, is a great reflection opportunity for me. Oh, well, there it is. All right, so back to Lightroom picture in picture. So here's the, the final book. Uh, it ended up to be, how many pages? 120 pages. Um, which is more than I usually do. I usually do about 80 to 100. Um, I had a 50% off coupon for this, so this was not $83 of self-indulgence plus shipping. But um, yeah, it's, it's just, I, I'm really glad I have these. I've done this for the past three years, and I'm really, really glad for it. Um, you can see some of my experiences. You can see some of my thematic directions, my composition directions and consistencies and maybe different directions I'm going with uh, my subject choices uh, and um, composition methods. So, yeah. Oh, uh, one other thing. What did I want to say about Blurb? The coupon thing, I mentioned that. So, yeah, when you're all done, what you do is in the bottom right corner, you would click send book to blurb and what that's going to do is render this whole thing out as a package and it, if it's 100 pages it's going to take a while uh, i think it took my computer about 20 30 minutes to render this guy out uh, and um yeah so you grab a coffee or whatever your favorite beverage is so um yeah how do you end the book well you put a cute puppy dog on the last couple pages because he's super special uh, I have some architecture in here, some street photography. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, one way you can save some money on these books is this logo page. That knocks, I think, 10% off. If I Let me see. If I turn it off, it goes from 84 to 100 bucks. So what is that? About 7, 15, 17%. Um, and what that is, it's a really subtle at the last... Here, let me go back to the main cam. On the last page of the book... It's a light gray, and it says blurb. That's it. So that saves you 15%. Big fan of saving money when I can. So, yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah, building a book. Enrique learned something. Yay, he says he did learn how to display photos in the book. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, I hope to do some more live streams or a podcast. I don't know, whatever the cool th kids are doing next year. 
Uh, <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. I do enjoy the live streams. They're, they're kind of different. Uh, so, yeah. All right. There we go. Got all the batteries still working in my light, so we're good to go. All right. Um, that's what I have for today. We didn't build the whole book, but it's free. So what do you expect? <laughs> anyway, hope your uh, holiday shopping, if you do that kind of thing, is is done or uh, soon to be done. Hope uh, you are having a good end of the year in the midst of, wow, what is going on in the world. Uh, hope you have friends and family to count on and rely on and find peace and happiness in the midst of all that. Uh, I think I'm going to wrap this up unless there are any other questions, because it's time to go to the bathroom. So that's always a good time to end a live stream. Anyway, thank you all so much. Uh, thanks to those of you who may watch this on uh, the uh, replay. I hope uh, you, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below um, or send me an email through my website. Uh, I, as I mentioned, I will, in the replay version, add uh, links to two videos, how to do the five-star rating in Lightroom, uh, for sorting photos and also how to import photos and name them inside a Lightroom Classic. So that's that. Lightroom's fun. Uh, all I have a playlist with uh, Lightroom videos as well, a whole bunch of new stuff that they added in October. So feel free to watch those if you're a Lightroom user, although Enrique is not. So you have to go somewhere else for those videos, my friend. I'm sorry. All right, I'm rambling, waffling, as uh, Thomas Heaton says, waffling on. So I'm going to call it good and wish you all a great rest of your day. Uh, happy holidays as we approach Christmas and the other holidays. And I uh, wish you the best. Happy New Year. And uh, stay safe, stay well. Have fun creating photos if that's what you're doing. Have fun creating podcasts. I don't know, that's what Peter does. So uh, until I see you all again in another video, take care and I will see you next time. So bye for now. <laughs>